Ah, hello. Well, here am I. Uh, the arches from Coot Snake. I will install them in this fourth episode in my series about transform my Yimni into a proper off-roader. Uh, I will also mount this spacers and um, uh, put on the tires. Uh, but first, let's look at the struggle with the suspension. And uh, what I mean with struggle are rusty bolts and uh, difficult coil springs and uh, so on. Uh, but I will explain later. Yeah, hang on. Iron Man coil springs and shock absorbers from 4x4offroad.se As an extra security under the car, I put my tires and the timber while working with the difficult bolts at the suspension. The old bolts to the rear suspension have not been any big problem. To get the springs on its position have not been easy, especially as I wanted to avoid disconnecting the brake lines. I had good help from my dear friend Dan. To mount the rear shock absorbers was a piece of cake. Here we see the rear shock skid plates. To disassemble the front shock absorbers was trickier. One lower bolt and both the top mounting nuts had to be cut off. To make it easier to assemble the front springs, I decided to compress them. My method was perhaps not the safest and uh, nothing I want to recommend, uh, but we were careful and uh, it went well. To get the shock absorbers, as well as the front shock skid plates and at the same time the front axe diff guard on position was no problem. But to get the nut on top of the shock absorbers was by far the most annoying experience uh, because it was totally unexpected problem. Due to the paint on the pin and the fact that the nut was a locking nut, it was impossible to get it enough on the threaded rod so one could hold out the rod on the profile top. We had to disassemble the shock absorbers and put them in the vise to be able to force the nut through the paint layer. Now the work with the wheel arch widener starts. Coat snake, fender flash from Adventure Truck BV. One must adapt them, drill a pair of holes 
and cut a piece at the stark arches as well as a piece underneath close to the rock slides. It is good to be two people when assemble them, or, or at least when you must measure out the holes. The rubber stripes are very annoying because they don't stick to the fender flares but uh, came off while work is done to mount the flares. You remember the fuel tank guard? Here I am assembling it. One welded nut was broken, but I managed to get a new bolt from a bow into the frame and um, I had to replace the other bolts with longer ones. The spacers. Black Raptor 30mm wheel spacers from Gymnibits.com. It is very exciting to see how it turns out along with the tires. Mounting the tires. They are very heavy, so you don't want to do it twice. So don't forget the hubcap. The steering absorber. Ironman from 4x4offroad.se no manual was attached, but easy to find on the web. I measure the center of compression, which is important to define the position for the bracket to be placed on the steering rod. No big deal to mount it, except for the pin with the paint layer again. When trying the steering, I noticed that the wheel hit with the arches. 
so uh, it became necessary to cut off another piece, very unexpected. Oh good grief, I'm a little worried about how this will work in real life at the off-road. Time to lower the car to the ground, very exciting. It means a milestone. The exterior work is almost ready. Aha, you see, we are in the beginning of December and it had been snowing in the Gothenburg area. Nice! Well, this was all for today. In the next video it will be about the interior works. Thank you for watching. Please give it a thumb up if you liked it. Bye bye!